what is going on guys welcome back to another video today we're going to be doing predictions for the fifa world cup european qualifiers yes we're finally back in international break it's not the actual world cup and it's not the actual euros but we got some fifa world cup qualifiers it's gonna be really jam-packed because we're gonna be playing a bunch of games now during this international break then i think there's no more international games until the euros and then after the Euros, there's um, more World Cup qualifiers throughout next season, and then the World Cup, because the Euros were delayed, so it's a bit different. But either way, there's 10 groups from Group A all the way down to Group J, and we're going to be predicting who goes through. Now, the way it works in these, if you don't know, there are basically 50 teams all from Europe, um, they're just about, they're not every single country, but it's just about every single country. Um, yeah, I mean, you got anywhere from the big ones like Portugal, Spain, down to the small ones like um, Faroe Islands, at Moldova, Montenegro, Gibraltar. Uh, you got San Marino even. I mean, you got some small teams, you got some big teams. You got to include everyone. Um, it's the World Cup. It's not um, anyone can qualify in the world. It's, it's, it's the World Cup. It's called the World Cup for a reason. Now, the way it works, if you don't already know, to qualify, basically, they're pretty even groups. They're very even groups. Usually, each group will have, like, one really big team. You got two decent teams and then two not as good teams, but there's still a chance. Either way, if you get first in your group, you qualify for the World Cup. So, that means there's going to be 10 first place finishers that will qualify for the World Cup. Now, position number two... You go to the playoffs for World Cup qualification um, for the 8th best. So basically, the way it works is the World Cup is 32 teams, as we know, and that comes from teams from North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, and Australia, and like that other region. And Europe cannot send so many teams. Europe does have the most teams in the World Cup. I don't exactly know how many teams um, that are actually in the World Cup. Um... But, I mean, let's see if we can maybe find here the World Cup. Here we go. World Cup. If we go to the World Cup, right? Um, okay, so the, in the World Cup, as we know, there are uh, 32 teams. And if we go through this, we're going to see a decent amount of teams from uh, Europe. We see Russia is a European team, Spain, Portugal. Um, those are both European teams. France, Denmark, Croatia. Iceland, Switzerland, Serbia, Sweden, Germany. I still can't believe that Germany got fourth. Got Belgium, England, uh, and then you got Poland. So that's 14. I just counted 14 teams. So out of the 32, there's going to be 14 that are from uh, Europe. And then I think there's like a decent like four from Africa. There's probably like, I think, t maybe I think from the North America and South America combined, there's like a good six or seven. Asia's got like th four or five, um, all those things. But either way, we're going to go back to the World Cup qualifiers here. We're just going through France, the previous World Cup winners. Now, here we go. So basically, the way it works is since there's 14, uh, the top will basically qualify for the World Cup in these groups. And then out of the second place finishers, I believe four of out of the ten will then move on to the world cup um to kind of go in like a playoff format which will definitely be interesting i don't know if it's cross um continent or not but we're gonna go on with this we're already four minutes into the video let's get on to this so group a we got azerbaijan luxembourg portugal ireland serbia so as we see here azerbaijan and luxembourg i don't know all the players from every nation i don't really know any players from azerbaijan or luxembourg um they're kind of the smaller ones, they're the underdogs, but then you got Portugal, and Portugal, man, people are saying they could be the big thing, and I honestly don't disagree. You got Cristiano Ronaldo, who might not be in his prime, but he is hungry. Him and Messi both are going to be hungry for the 2022 World Cup, and Messi's not won the World Cup, he's been to the final. Uh, Portugal uh, never, I think the furthest Ronaldo's made it, maybe to the semifinals, I think, of the World Cup, but never to the final. But you got Cristiano Ronaldo. Then you got Joao Felix, who I think at that time of the World Cup, he'll be 23, maybe 24. He can provide a lot in the attack. Then you got the all-rising um, Bruno Fernandes on top of that. And then in the back line, you have to remember, you got Diaz, who has really asserted himself. Same with Cancelo, the Manchester City connection there. 
Uh, you got some good players all around. And you got a young group of players, actually, when you think about it, all around. But then you also got, like, experience, like Ronaldo. It's a really balanced group. And you got to think they would be favorites for this group. You also got Ireland and Serbia, who people are probably saying, okay, they're probably the ones that are going to try to fight for that second place. Because probably going to think Portugal's going to get first. Ireland's got some decent players. Um, Daughtery, um, Matt Daughtery is the first one that comes to mind. He went to Spurs from Wolves. Uh, you got a couple more. You got Adam Ida, I believe, or Ida. Um, he's one of the top ones. Uh, Serbia, they've got a little bit. You got, um, uh, what's his name? The one for Fulham, Mitrovic, I believe. You got Matic, who's a bit younger. I don't know every single player, but Ireland and Serbia, they got a couple good players, and they got a well-rounded squad. It's just about who's in a guilt the brew. And I think Portugal will be getting first in this group. I don't see why they wouldn't. There might be an upset in here that I might choose, but not Portugal. Portugal will go through, and I think Serbia is going to get second, mainly because I think Serbia has a bit more experience, and as of late, I haven't followed so much international stuff, and I'm pretty sure Ireland are kind of on a slump. Now, going to the second group of 10, we got group we got Georgia, got Greece, Kosovo, Spain, Sweden. So once again, you see like a powerhouse in Spain. You see two close contenders like Sweden and Greece. And then you see two smaller nations like Kosovo and Georgia. So you're probably thinking Georgia and Kosovo probably don't stand much of a chance here. I can't even name a player from them. So that kind of hurts. But then you got Spain. Um, you got some players on Spain who probably are going to be playing their last World Cup. Spain has a lot of players that are probably going to be playing like their last World Cup. You got Sergio Ramos in the back. You got Carvajal if you include him. You got uh, you also got young players like Nacho. You have um, De Gea in net. I don't know if he'll start, but uh, you got to think. I don't know if Kepa will. You got Alvaro Morata who's probably going to be up top. You got Saul in the middle. Rodri could play in the middle. Um, you got a lot of players that could play in the middle. Even like Pedri. Fati, he'll be health. I he don't think I don't think he'll play an international break. I think Fati's coming back, like right at the end of international break. Um, he's almost ready, which I'm happy for. Uh, you got Ricky Puig, you got Pedri a lot from Barcelona. Got some youngsters, you got some older players. I think Spain will top this group. Second place between Sweden and Greece. Greece, uh, they're they're balanced. They're a balanced team. Sweden, on the other hand, though, they have standout players. Alexander Isak and Zlatan Ibrahimovic, right there. That looks like some good players that will compete. I think Sweden have the slight edges of players that can do a little bit more than the Greece players, such as Ibrahimovic and then also um, Alexander Isak. So I think Spain's going to get first in this group. Sweden will get second. Group C. Once again, you got that kind of big format. You got Italy as probably that big powerhouse. You got Switzerland and Bulgaria, who could be close second or third places. And you got Northern Ireland and Lithuania kind of smaller. This is a bit interesting, though, because I think Northern Ireland, I think there's four teams here that have a chance to qualify. And the first two groups, we kind of only saw two teams. But here, I actually think Northern Ireland has a good chance to maybe get top two. But I'm going to lean towards Italy definitely getting first. Um, Italy... And they got the firepower, I believe. You got Lorenzo and Signe then there. You got Cellini, you got Bonucci, you got Donnarumma in the back. You got a lot of players all around. You got youngsters like Tonali. Um, you got players all around. Chiri Mobile as well. I think Italy will top this group. Second place, it's it's between Switzerland, Bulgaria, and Northern Ireland. I do think Switzerland will make it. Um, they got some decent players. You got what, Akanji. You have a couple other players in there. You splattered them in. Oh, Somer. That was the one. I knew they had a good goalie. Uh, Somer from Gladbach. He's a good one. I think Switzerland have the slight edge over some teams like Bulgaria and Northern Ireland, which is why I think that Italy will get first and Switzerland will get second. Group D, France is probably going to be the favorites here, but don't sleep on Finland or Ukraine. Maybe Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kazakhstan. But you got to think first, France. You got to think. I don't know. People are saying France is weaker than they were in 2018, which I agree. Um, you obviously still got Mbappe. You got Griezmann, who's declined. Zembele, Pogba. A lot of those players have actually declined. You got even Olivier Giroud up top. In the back, you got Varane, Lungley, Umtiti, who really does not play well for Barcelona. But in for France, he's actually a beast. And then in goal, you could do Lafont, You could do Lloris. They got a lot of options everywhere. You got Mendy in the back. You have options when you play for France. You got, like, 
probably 20 good players that could all start. It's insane. You kind of have two teams, and I won't be surprised if they completely heavily rotate. I'm, I'm, I'm missing a bunch of players. I'm even missing, what, Anthony Martial, and, you know, things like... It, it, they have they have Conte I, I completely forgot about, Kovacic, I think. No, not Kovacic, what am I saying? They have a lot of players, is the point. I think France will definitely easily top this group at first. Finland or Ukraine is what I'm between. Finland got with players like Puki, Hedreki, um, Ukraine, uh, what's the guy? They got some good players from, um, they got some good players from, like, Shakhtar and Dinamo Kiev. I can't remember the guy's name. It's, like, T-S-Y-G-A-N-K-O-V. It's, like, Saigenkov. I can't remember his name. It's a silent T. But they got some decent players. I don't think Finland will do well. Finland have a big hole in their midfield and defense. They have good goalie, though. But I actually think Ukraine will go through with France as the second-place team. Group E. Belgium, I got to think, is probably the top team here. But then you got Wales, Belarus, Czech Republic, and Estonia. Belgium, you got my spot for first place. You got Kevin De Bruyne. You got Thibaut Courtois. Let's not talk about that story. <laughs> you got Romelu Lukaku, who's definitely... People sleep on him all the time. Eden Hazard, that's different. You got Thorgan Hazard, um... In the back, Vertonghen and Alderweireld, who are definitely older. We still got a lot of quality players on Belgium. Um, some have definitely declined. Some have definitely um, risen to the top lately. But then you got these other um, teams here. You got Czech Republic, who has the one goalie from Sevilla, Vaslik, I think. I don't think he starts anymore because Bona right now has a starting job. Czech Republic have a few good players here and there. Wales, though, Wales actually have a... They have some players I can name. You got Dan James, who, you know, he's not the greatest, but I know a lot about him. He, you have youngsters, Dan James, David Brooks, um, Gareth Bale, obviously the main one. I think Belgium will get first, and I think Wales will fall right behind them at second. Group F, here we go. Another group here. We got Austria, Denmark, Faroe Islands, Israel, Moldova, and Scotland. One thing about this group is there's no big team. There's no Portugal, there's no Spain, there's no France, there's no big powerhouse team in this group. You got Austria, though, you got Denmark, and I think Scotland. Those three are going to compete for the two spots. Scotland, you got some great players here. You got some youngsters like Kieran Tierney, you got Scott McTominay, you got a bunch of players around that are definitely um, evolving as time goes on. Austria, though, you got some good players as well, just like David Alaba. Denmark, can't sleep on them. They have veterans like Kasper Schmeichel. Um, it's, it's, it's tricky. Uh, it's tricky. I think Austria slightly have the upper hand in this one. And I think they'll get first in the group. Second is between Denmark and Scotland. And I'm going with the ones coming up from the north. Well, actually Scotland and Denmark are both from the north. But I'm going with Scotland. Group G. Got Gibraltar, Latvia, Montenegro, Netherlands, Norway, Turkey. So you're looking here, Netherlands, Norway, Turkey. The last three there, probably the ones that stand out. I can't really name any players from Gibraltar and Latvia. I can actually name a player from Montenegro, um, Savic from uh, Atletico Madrid. But I don't think he's going to be enough. Um, you got Netherlands, Norway, Turkey. Now, so these teams are interesting. This is why. Netherlands, you got a very interesting team. De Jong, De Litt, um, You got, you know, that Netherlands talent from Ajax. Um... You also have players like Virgil van Dijk, who won't be available for these games, but van, van Dijk and De Litt in the back is definitely good. I said you already have um, players like De Jong, um, oh, what's the player? I can't remember their one striker for some reason. I'm completely going blank, but they got a lot of good players, Netherlands, and they... People have always wondered, oh, why can't Netherlands win a trophy? You know, with Johan Cruyff and all the other greats they've had, and even now, the great team they have. I still think Netherlands will go on top. Then you got Norway and Turkey here. Turkey have always had a big population of players. No one really to stand out, per se, but a good balanced team. Like Khaled Hanogu is a good one for them right now. But Norway, this is the team I'm doing. I'm actually doing a player career mode with the Norwegian, and it's really fun. Because Norway's got a good team. They've got... Erling Haaland, Odegaard, Steven Burge, Alexander Sorloth. They got a lot of players up top. Their defense is the problem. But with that attack, I actually think that attack, it depends. That's probably one of the better attacks. Um, if you're just talking attacks-wise, Norway probably might even have better than Netherlands. Um, but I think Norway are going to go second in the group. I think they got a bright future ahead of them. If Haaland plays like he does for Dortmund... 
who knows? I know Holland scored nine goals in a Norway game in the under 20s, and that's how he announced himself. So we'll see. Maybe he'll announce himself here and they get top of the group. Group H, interesting one. Croatia, Cyprus, Malta, Russia, Slovakia, Slovenia. Got a lot of flags here with um, white, blue, and red. That's for sure four of them. Okay. Croatia is probably the ones that stand out. They made the World Cup final in 2018. Probably not expected, but now you gotta think, okay, okay, we cannot sleep on them. Luka Modric is obviously not as good as he used to be, but lately with Real Madrid, he's actually looked pretty good. You got players like Mandzukic and a few others all around. Kovacic is a good one in the midfield with Modric. Uh, Russia, um... Yeah, Russia knocked out Spain in 2018. Spain's one of the teams I root for. I don't root for a particular team, but um, I root for a bunch of teams. I root for Spain, uh, Norway is actually one, USA, I just and Ireland, India, if they ever make it. I root for a bunch of teams, I, especially Antarctica. You know, that's one of the good teams as well. Slovakia and Slovenia, they got their good share of players um, all around. I think Croatia tops this group, and I think Russia gets second. Okay, two more groups. Here we go. Group I, Albania, Andorra, England, Hungary, Poland, San Marino. If San Marino gets one point, if San Marino gets one point in this group, I don't know, man. I don't know. What are we saying? San Marino getting a point. If they get a point, it'll be like a nil-nil draw to Andorra. Either way, main teams here that are standing out is England, Hungary, and Poland. England. I mean, come on. You think of the attack? Kane, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Sterling, Sancho, Rashford, Greenwood, Saka, Foden, all that. You got a lot of players around. I can name it all from the Premier League. In the back, you got Harry Maguire, you got Luke Shaw, you got Trent Alexander-Arnold, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, who did not get called up, Trippier, um, Pickford, I don't think he got called up, Dean Henderson, so you got a lot. Ben Foster as well. It, you got a lot of players. England's getting first in this group. Hungary or Poland? Hungary's got a balanced team with, you know, they have Dominic Sabosolai, I know him, um, Gulasi and Gold. Poland, though, Robert Lewandowski, arguably the best player in the world right now, which is why I think those type of players Poland have, and I think that's why they're getting second. England will get first. Last group, Armenia, Germany, Iceland, Legends, North Macedonia, and Romania. Germany. 2018 World Cup was disappointing. Oh, it was disappointing. But now you got hungry players on that team. Manuel Neuer, Joshua Kimmich, Leroy Sané, Thomas Muller, Serge, Nab Serge Nabry German? I don't know. I'm naming just Bayern players. Then you add in Marco Royce. Then you add in Tony Cruz. The Bayern players are good enough. Then you add the other players. This German team, I don't see how they don't get top. I think the 2018 World Cup is behind them. They're going for another World Cup. I mean, they did win the 2014 one. I don't know where Mario Gotze is, but we'll see. I think they get first. Second. Ooh, this is hard. This is hard. I think Romania has the upper edge here. I'm going with Romania for second. So, that is the recap of all the groups and who I think is going through. Remember, in Group A, I'm going with Portugal first and Serbia second. Group B, I'm going with Spain first and Sweden second. Group C, I'm going with Italy first. And I believe I said Switzerland second. Group D, I said France first and Ukraine second. Group E, I said Belgium first and Wales second. Group F, I said Austria first and Scotland second. Group G, I said Netherlands first and Norway second. Group H, I said Croatia first and Russia second. Group I, I said England first and Poland second. And finally, Group J, I said Germany first and Romania second. That is my predictions in the comments below. What do you think? Who do you think is going to be the underdog? Who do, what big team do you think is going to fail? What player is going to stand out? What player that fails for their club does really well for an international team? What player that does really well for their club fails for the national team? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. International break is here. Manchester United definitely need it. Either way, I'll see you guys on that next video. I don't think I'm going to do a sports talk video in a while. So you're going to start seeing clips. But like the last three videos or four videos have been sports talk. But anyway, that's going to be it. As I said, subscribe if you like the content. Like the video, like it because that is what it's for. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Buh bye bye